Hey guys, it's Haley and welcome to another bookish video. Today I'm going to be giving you some short horror book recommendations. I have seen a lot of requests for this video in the comments. I tend to read a lot of short horror books and I absolutely love horror novellas. So this is going to be my ultimate guide in this video. If you are looking for a short horror novella to read, bang it out, experience it like a horror movie. These are my best recommendations for you guys. I think I have about 20 books on this list. But before we get into the recommendations, I want to thank today's sponsor, which is Skillshare. I have loved working with Skillshare in the past, so let me go ahead and tell you a little bit more about them. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity, learn new skills, and invest in themselves for personal growth. Have a specific skill you're trying to learn? Skillshare is the perfect place to start. From photography and illustration to graphic design, freelancing, and more, you can find classes that will match your goals and interests. Here you can see that I have bookmarked a class on marketing. My favorite class that I've been taking lately is Marketing for Therapists and Coaches, How to Find Clients by Giorgio Aprile. And honestly, it is so nice to just get a master class with all of the information right there instead of having to go to so many different avenues. And it's a pretty quick course as well. So if you have a skill or a passion that you've been wanting to learn just a little bit more about, go ahead and click my link down below and join Skillshare, the first thousand people, yes, you heard me correctly, 1,000 people to click that link will get a free month of Skillshare completely free. You get to take all of the classes that you want, become a member, learn that new skill, hone that passion. And thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Now let's go ahead and get into the books. So I have these horror novellas split up into a couple subgenres and subcategories because I know there are certain things in horror that some people don't like. So I'm just going to start off right off the bat with extreme horror and splatterpunk recommendations. These are going to be the goriest and most intense horror books on this list. So if you don't like that, you can go ahead and skip past this section. But for all of y'all who love the gore and don't care about the trigger warnings, this is the section for you. But if you've never heard about the extreme horror genre before, I do want to tell you a little bit about it just as a warning. These books are intended to shock, horrify, offend, and disgust you. That is the purpose of these books. So if you are not wanting to read something that does that, maybe you should not pick up one of these books. And if this book does that to you, please, please, please do not hurt the genre, these indie authors and the reviewers by giving it a low rating just because you did not like what the book was trying to do. That would be like if I picked up a romance book really was in a mood to not see people fall in love, went into a romance book, watched somebody fall in love exactly as the book was intended to do, and then gave it a one-star review because I do not like reading about people falling in love very similar with the extreme horror genre, please only go in if you know the intentions of the book and that is what you're wanting to experience. I'm very passionate about this genre. I am a big proponent of the extreme horror genre. I've recently gotten more into splatterpunk as well, so these are my best recs, but proceed with caution. First up, we have probably my favorite book in the extreme horror genre, which is one of the books in the For the Sake of Trilogy by Judith Sonnet. Now, this will eventually be a trilogy. I have only read the first two books because those are the only two that are out. We are still waiting patiently on the third one. But like, come on, Miss Judith, we need it. I gave the first book in the trilogy 4.5 stars. There was just a little bit of something missing for me, but then the sequel was such an easy five star. I want to tell the entire plot of the book to everyone I talk to. I just want to spoil it for everyone because it's so good. It's one of those books where I immediately finished it, called Cameron into the other room, 
and told him the entire plot because it is just so genius. The imagery that is stuck in my head from that book is just insane. I don't know how Miss Judith does this to us, but she is constantly serving something that is bigger and better and gorier and crazier than what you typically see in the extreme horror genre. Also, I am very, very excited to see a female person in the extreme horror space who is not me <laughs> because there are not a lot of extreme horror reviewers who identify as female and also very very few indie horror authors especially in the splatterpunk and extreme horror genre who are female and Miss Judith Sonnet is a trans woman. So not only by picking up these books will you be supporting an indie author and a female author, but also a LGBTQ author as well. There is just nothing that you can go wrong with picking up her books. And for the sake of follows this extremely heart pumping situation. It is about this woman whose daughter has recently gone missing in the past few months and she's extremely distraught and grieving as you can imagine and one day she gets a little package outside her door with a picture of her daughter and a burner phone that says if you want your daughter back go ahead and give us a call and when she calls she is put through the series of tests psychological, physical, and emotional in nature to save her daughter. And the book basically, as I always like to say with these, asks the question, what would you do for the sake of your loved ones? And the second book takes the stakes to a whole other level. There's like this squid game kind of element to it that is so chilling. And oh my God, I just, I cannot tell you how much I love these books. They're super short, under 200 pages around the like hundred and something page mark. Yeah, they're just amazing. And I'm gonna keep recommending them until the cows come home. Speaking of cows, <laughs> how many of you guys knew that I was going to make that transition. Okay, my next recommendation is Cows by Matthew Stico. And um, I don't want to recommend this book. I really don't. Because this is the only book I have ever read that is so horrific and gruesome that I do not want to recommend it to you guys. But I understand that there are people out there that have higher tolerance for horror than I. So I do want to recommend it to those few people. I am not easily disturbed. I can read extremely horrific content and not bad an eye, but something about Cows by Matthew Stico just really, really got to me. I had a very hard time reading this book because of the body horror, the bodily function things, the fluids, bodily fluid. I can't talk about it. But basically, we are following a boy who has grown up living under the thumb of his abusive mother. And he decides one day that he's going to get a job and try to get himself out of there so he can get his own house, have a wife, have a family, and escape this horrific woman. And he gets a job at this cow processing facility for beef. And let me just tell you, you're literally never going to want to eat beef ever again. Uh, kiss Whataburger goodbye because I'm gonna tell you right now, I was not able to eat it in the weeks following reading this book. It, oof, it's bad. It is so much animal horror, animal abuse, animal disfigurement. If you have any sensitivity to that, do not even try to read this book. But it did what it was supposed to do, right? I'm talking about it like I hate it, but y'all, it was intended to disgust me and no book has met that mark as much as cows, so I have to recommend it. Next up, I do want to mention Survivor by J.F. Gonzalez because this is my favorite standalone extreme horror of all time. It is the book that really got me into extreme horror and got me addicted to the thrills of this genre. This is a little bit longer than all the other books that I'm talking about in this video, but it's still under 300 pages, so it is a fairly short book. If you like pretty girls, but you're looking for something just a little bit more intense, this is what I would recommend to you. It follows a woman named Lisa and her and her husband are going on this getaway little vacation for a weekend and on the way there Lisa is kidnapped and her kidnappers let her know that she is going to be the star of their film. 
and that would be a snuff film. They are going to kill her on camera and post it for the world to see. This is obviously a really horrifying, nerve-wracking situation. I think a nightmare scenario for any woman or person really out there, but the book is called Survivor and Lisa does whatever it takes to survive, even if it means sacrificing others. This was an easy five star, seriously one of the best books I've ever read. It's an intense thrill ride and you are just in for it from page one. I actually have another extreme horror recommendation from Judith Sonnet and that is The Clown Hunt. This is a super quick dirty slasher about a group of people who kind of want to take back <laughs> the power from clowns. This is the best way that I can describe this book. It's very funny, it's very clever, and the whole thing just kind of takes that 2016, there's a clown with a knife in the middle of the street situation and turns it on its head because this group of people are sick of clowns who have been tormenting them and they wanna take them out. So the civilians start taking out the clowns. It is very fucked up. It has the most intense and most well-written prologue to any horror book I've ever read. I would like an entire movie just based on the prologue. So if you think you can handle it, go ahead and check that one out as well. Next up, I wanna talk about The Summer I Died by Ryan C. Thomas. I just did an entire dedicated reading vlog to this book. If you want my full, full in-depth thoughts, I'm gonna link that up above and down below for you guys. But I had mixed thoughts on this book. I think I was thinking about it a little bit too deep. And if you're just looking for something that feels like a classic slasher horror movie where there's kids who are acting a fool in the woods and they run into a serial killer and they get tortured and killed, this is that. I think this will work for a lot, a lot of people, especially if you're not me and you're not thinking about you know, mental health rep and social justice <laughs> while you're reading. I can't help but think about those things, but if that's something that you can put out of your mind and just enjoy some gruesome horror, maybe this one would work better for you than it did for me. And my last recommendation in this extreme splatterpunk section is The Slob by Aaron something. Okay, I just read this book this morning, literally finished it a matter of hours ago. So author's name is not on my mind because I have not actually seen the book cover. I literally impulsively got it on Kindle this morning and Buddy read it with McKay. So I literally just finished it. It was very fresh on my mind. And this book was crazy. Like went to places I have never even thought of in extreme horror before. I was also reading that it had won a bunch of splatterpunk awards. So the gore in this book is real and it is visceral. There were parts of my body that were clamping and tensing up as I was reading because holy shit, this book brings it all. I'm talking gore. I'm talking body horror. I'm talking bodily fluids. I'm talking torture. I'm talking humor. Yeah, there is like a very parody-esque kind of humor that comes into this book that I think is really hilarious and well done, except for the last couple chapters. I wish the book would have ended before those last two chapters came in. I feel like they undermined the story a little bit, but because I was on such an intense thrill ride for the entire first 90% before those two chapters, I do still want to recommend it to you guys. It's only about 130 pages. Like I said, I read it this morning in just a couple hours. It was literally like watching the most gruesome horror movie ever. And it surprisingly had a lot of great mental health representation. There was some very interesting family dynamics and we actually got great background on our main characters which really built up some empathy for me as well as I was rooting for them to survive. So basically we're following this woman named Vera and she grew up in a very filthy home with a lot of mentally ill and depressed family members and it was up to her, the youngest in the family, to 
clean things up and try to make life a little bit better for herself. So she relies on cleaning as a coping mechanism throughout her whole life. And as an adult, she becomes a door-to-door -door vacuum sales girl, which I just think is, that trajectory is a little bit funny, but also just so heartwarming and really endears you to our main character. And one day she is trying to sell a vacuum to this man who is the slob. The absolute slobbing slob you could ever imagine. The descriptions of this man are horrifying and she gets invited in to demonstrate how this vacuum works and she may never come out. It is horrifying, it is gross, it is extreme horror. My next little sub genre section that I have here is all dystopian or apocalyptic horror. So this is not necessarily gonna be speculative, but it's something a little bit futuristic, apocalyptic, anything like that. And I know there are some people who just don't like that type of horror, so I wanted to separate this out from everything else. My first recommendation in this category is We Can Never Leave This Place by Eric LaRocca. I am an absolute slut for Eric Loraka books. I think his writing is so fantastic and it definitely is that in We Can Never Leave This Place. This has a lot more fantasy elements than I'm used to in my typical horror reads, but for some reason this book just really really worked for me and I think it was the themes of intergenerational trauma and mental health that really clinched it for me. All of the like underlying themes and metaphors in Eric Loraka books are just coming through at all times. So this book follows a young girl and her parents as they are trying to navigate a post-apocalyptic world and um, some very fantastical weird creatures come into their lives and that's all I'm going to say about that. The next short horror wreck I have in this category is Tender is the Flesh, which I just read during Summerween. Again, if you want full thoughts, live footage of me reading it, I will link that vlog up above and down below. And this book takes place in a not necessarily apocalyptic, but just a future world where a pandemic has hit and it has affected animals. And when humans eat the animals who've been infected, they die. So we can no longer eat animals and things have shifted where apparently everyone's just fine with eating humans. Uh, so cannibalism is accepted, is actually the norm in this world. And we follow a man who works at a meat processing plant and as he grapples with the horrors that are going on around him in this changing world. I thought the writing in this book was fantastic. And if you can get a hold of the audio through your library or through Libro FM, I would highly, highly recommend this audiobook. It is so well done. As always, you'll know I have my Libro FM link down below. The next apocalyptic horror book I want to recommend is We Need to Do Something by Max Booth. And this is so far, my favorite horror book of the year. I just really immediately got sucked in to this world. We follow a family as they are sheltering in place during a tornado and they just think they're gonna wait out this tornado, you know, exit the bathroom and go upon their normal lives, go about their normal lives. But unfortunately, a tree falls on their house and traps them in the bathroom. They can't open the door because a tree has fallen right there. And it might actually be a good thing that they're trapped in there because there's some weird shit going on outside. Nobody is coming to rescue them and the world might be coming to an end. I loved the family dynamics in this book. I thought it was so fast paced, so exciting. The forced proximity of all of the characters in a small space just creates this uncomfortable tension that really adds to the horror. Oh, I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. But I know that this is so controversial and a lot of people hate the ending. So if you don't like weird, trippy, ambiguous endings to your books, maybe don't pick this one up. 
But if you sound like me and you think our tastes are similar, maybe this one would work for you as it did for me. Finally, my last book in this category is Comfort Me with Apples. And this book takes place in this like alternate world. This is more dystopian. It's like a, you don't know if it's in the past or the future. It's just this other world where things work differently. And everyone in this little world, this little community is just perfect. They're like robots and they do exactly what they're supposed to do. And we're following this girl who doesn't really know her purpose in this world and all she knows is she has this very overbearing scary husband and we're trying to navigate that with her figure out what's going on i don't want to give away too much because this book is extremely short like under 100 pages short so i will leave that up to you but it's basically all this bigger allegory in the story that i really enjoyed all right the back half of all of these short horror recommendations are going to be just that general short horror novellas for you to read. They don't have a specific subcategory. I think these are pretty universally great for a horror audience. And the first one I want to talk about is The House at the Bottom of the Lake by Josh Mallerman. And this has such great summer vibes. It's about this little teenage couple, this boy and this girl who give very like adolescent first love energy. They spend the summer on this lake and one day they dive down and discover that there's a whole house at the bottom of the lake and they can just walk around in there. The air changes, something happens where they can just survive down in this house at the bottom of the lake. So they start spending increasingly more amounts of time down there and kind of forgetting what the world above is like. And it's a very slippery slope. It's a very haunting, tense horror. And because there's water involved, I felt like it was very hard to breathe while I was reading this book. It is just so well done. I love the way that Josh Mallerman's writing style just shines in this book. So I would say if you loved any of his previous works like Daphne or Bird Box or Pearl, you will definitely love this one and it's one that you can read really quick. Probably the shortest book on this list is The Grown Up by Gillian Flynn. I read this book in under an hour. It is like teensy teensy tiny and it is also one of my favorite short books ever. It is so so funny and clever but it also brings the horror. It is about this woman who is a scammer. Basically she grew up a scammer. She's trying to live her life as a scammer but that's not really working for her anymore. So she has turned to giving hand jobs in the back room <laughs> of her psychic practice, which of course she's a scammer. She's not a real psychic. So she realizes, you know, I'm not going to be able to do this forever. I might as well really lean into this whole psychic thing. And so she starts to help a woman with this psychic problem that becomes a lot more twisted than she initially thinks. My next recommendation for you is Night of the Mannequins by Stephen Graham Jones. This one is so fun. It is such just a classic slasher vibes with a little bit of a twist. We are following this group of, I would say middle schoolers. They're pretty young kids. So that perspective to read from, I think is just really fun. And they are playing a prank on each other when they're working at the movie theater. So one of their friends is working at the movie theater. The rest of the group of friends is bringing in this mannequin and they like buy him a ticket, sit him up. You know, it's like a fun little harmless prank that these kids are doing. But um, one day during a movie, the mannequin gets up and walks out. So that's an issue. And we follow this mannequin as he has a life of his own and rampages through the town. It is kind of clever, kind of funny, and that is my favorite type of horror where there's just a little bit of humor involved and it's definitely a slasher. So get ready for some fun kills in this one. Next up, I want to talk about To Be Devoured by Sarah Tatzlinger. And this is an LGBTQ horror novella that takes place with this female female couple. Uh, so these two girls are dating, but we don't really know if it's like they're dating dating or if one girl's just like kind of there and the other one's obsessed with her, which is more the vibe that I got when I read it. And the one girl who's a little bit obsessive 
has this other obsession, aside from her per partner, girlfriend, whatever situation, where she is really wanting to experiment with eating carrion um, or remains. Whether that be human, animal, or other, she just wants to eat flesh really bad. And I want to leave it there. I'll leave it really ambiguous because this is another super short one, like less than a hundred pages. And it just goes off the rails so quickly. There are some deeper themes in there. The writing is wonderful. It gets to you. It's gory. It's tense. And honestly, it just goes off the rails. So it's a wild one. And of course, I have to recommend Eric Laraca's other two books, which are also in my favorite horror novellas. His first novel, which is Things Have Gotten Worse Since We Last Spoke, is also LGBTQ horror, where this woman is trying to sell her vintage apple peeler on a queer message board, like forum type of situation. And she meets a woman who is willing to buy it from her. But when the woman realizes the deep attachment our main character Character has to this apple peeler, she strikes a deal with our main character and says that she can go ahead and keep the apple peeler if she does a few more things. And this relationship quickly turns toxic as our main character is sucked into this gross manipulation and is convinced to do increasingly more horrific acts. And of course, we have my favorite of all of Eric Loraca's books, which is You've Lost a Lot of Blood. This follows a gay couple as we're kind of seeing their unraveling. We know that there has been a murder in this couple, and we're trying to figure out how it transpired, who killed who, and why. And throughout the novel, we also have a book within a book trope where we're reading the story that was written by one of the men in the partnership. And this sci-fi kind of fantasy story is kind of mirroring the other timeline that we're following with the couple. So it's very interesting to see how those two stories are interacting, where there are similarities, where the metaphors intertwine. I had such a fun time over analyzing this book and I was also just enamored with the horror and with the sci-fi elements. But if you're not a fan of sci-fi and those little fantastical elements, maybe this isn't for you, but personally, I love this one. Next up, I I gotta talk about The Patient by Jasper DeWitt. This one people say is so, so, so wild. I don't think it was that crazy to me, maybe because I'm a mental health professional and I've seen the realities of some of these symptoms that are talked about in this book. But basically there's this patient at a mental hospital who no one can cure, no one can figure out what is going on with them. And so we're reading the patient files, kind of the accounts of what happened with this patient on this psychiatric message board. And we are reading posts from this person who allegedly tried to cure them and failed. And we figure out along the way what is plaguing this person. And we see all of the horrors that have unfolded since they have um, tried to be cured, I'll say. <laughs> I don't want to give away if they're actually treated or not, but this gave major poltergeist vibes, just like scary possession, demon energy. Obviously, we don't know throughout the story if the patient is possessed or if this is some type of psychosis, but for me, I just loved thinking about the like ghosty demon uh, theory as I was reading, and that's what was really, really scary for me. I'm also not a big fan of ghosty things. I hate paranormal normal horror. So the fact that I liked that theory and that's kind of the one that I ran with throughout reading, I feel like really says something about the tension and the writing in this novella. Next up, we have Sour Candy by Keelan Patrick Burke. And this one was so weird and so fun. If you like creepy little children, oh my God, you're gonna love this book. It's so easy to read. I also read this one in just a couple hours. And we follow this guy as he's going to the grocery store to like pick up some candy for his girlfriend. And in the candy aisle, he sees this kid absolutely freaking out and the only thing this kid wants to eat is sour candy and he's thinking like oh my god what an absolute mess of a child thank god i don't have any kids thank god for my girlfriend's birth control love that and as he's leaving the grocery store something absolutely 
horrific happens with this kid and he continues to have a relationship with this child throughout the novella which I don't want to give away because again so 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 short but it just goes absolutely off the rails and you think that it can't get worse and it keeps getting worse and worse and worse this isn't like immersive horror like I never felt physically scared while reading this but it is just a horrifying situation to think about yourself being in as you're watching this guy go through a situation it's like I would literally just have to that's my 13th reason goodbye and the last short horror novella that I want to recommend to you guys is One Bloody Thing After Another by Joey Camus. Camus? Camus? I don't know how to pronounce this man's last name and I will never learn because I've looked up pronunciations and they're all different. So, so sorry, Joey, but I absolutely love your novella. I thought this was such a fun book. It's basically just an amalgamation of craziness. Like you read the description and you're like, okay, there's a grumpy old man, a dog, a little girl who thinks she has some type of telekinetic powers, a little girl who's friends with the first little girl whose mom eats human flesh, and a lot of other just like weird shit going on. This is basically just a weird amalgamation of things. And we're following these younger girls. And one of the little girls feels like she might be starting to form a crush on her best friend, which is just such a pure journey to watch. But she's going through absolute turmoil as she's coming to terms with this. So it's this very weird, sweet <laughs> juxtaposition of crazy gory horror and a humorous perspective of an adolescent girl trying to figure out her sexuality it is just so endearing and the horror is is still there like don't get me wrong this is not just a sweet book it is so weird so fucked up so gory all of those things that you want in a horror book with wonderful wonderful character development and a piece that's just really heartwarming i don't know this book is such a weird amalgamation but i absolutely loved everything about it i think it is so so great it's definitely going to be one that i keep thinking about forever and keep recommending even though i've heard literally nobody else talk about it so that is going to be it for all of my horror novella wrecks i hope you got some good ones from this video and thank you again to skillshare for sponsoring y'all don't forget to click that link down below and get yourself a free month the first thousand of you are going to get that free month of skillshare so that is it thank you so much for watching and go ahead and give me a like if you liked it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and don't forget to go to therapy and read a book this week i will see you guys in my next one bye